as you guys might know from my last video, I actually had a humidification failure. So my 10 disc humidifier, which was in here, stopped working. So what that means is that's been out of action for a couple of weeks now, and I've had to fall back onto my backup humidifier, which is a hydro fog uh, uh, here, which you can see running. Now it hasn't been great for the quality of mushrooms. With this here, I can um, duct the humidity upper pipe here. This sits outside of the fruiting room, and it ducts it in, and it puts this even uh, layer of humidity all throughout the fruiting chamber behind me. I can't do it with this thing. This thing just billows out humidity into a small area, and then when my extractor fan turns on, which is down the back there, it almost sucks it all out. And so mushroom bags, which might be at the top or around the edges, um, don't quite get the humidity they need, and they tend to start drying out. So I've got new parts for this here, which have arrived, and what I'm also going to do is crack open that old 10 disc humidifier which was in there um, and see what, just what caused it to fail. I've already got a new power supply for it and I tested it on a new power supply and it would trip the power supply instantly. So it leads me to think that there's an overload uh, in, the, in the humidifier block itself. Right, what I'm going to do is open up this here. This is my uh, 10 head humidifier and we're going to see if we can uh, visually see what has caused this to stop working. I do know these are reasonably prone to failure. If you have used one of these and it has broken, then you've been in the same position I am in. It's held together by a few spot welds around the edges, so we'll just break those apart and uh, see what's inside. There is a wee LED light on the top here, and I have read on the internet that water ingress around these lights can cause them to leak. So we'll see if there's any invisible signs of water getting in there. So let's um, break this thing apart. We're just going to absolutely ham sandwich this and try and see if we can break these spot welds apart. That looks like it's all solid. So I've broken into this tablet, and you can see how these are made. They actually have the circuit board and these little piezoelectric transducers, and they must pour this, this sort of ceramic. I'm guessing it comes as a liquid and they pour it in and it hardens around it, and that's an attempt to waterproof them. I would assume that's an attempt to waterproof them. Now two of the, uh, two of the misting pads on this one had stopped working before the whole thing had stopped. Um, and so all I've had to do is strip the metal housing off, which is quite hard to get off, and, and basically break this in half with a hammer. So it's broken in half. And you can actually see there's actually rust which has gotten on the inside here of where it is broken in half. But not only that, but one of these transducers, the ones that had stopped working, has actually cooked off and it's really burnt. So there's obviously been some sort of short which has um, caused... Uh, this uh, little chip there to burn itself out. Now, before I did this, I tested it with a brand new power supply and it would trip the power supply straight away. So that um, told me that there was a short in here um, and there's just one of the shorts there you can see. Don't know if you can quite see that, but that's on there is where it's burnt out. Um, I also broke it down here and if we look into these ones, there's no sign of rust damage whatsoever. So that would uh, tell me that water has ingressed uh, through this plate here and, um, and blown it. My new one is a wee 6 disc, not the 10 disc. Um, the reason, there's a few reasons I've gone to that which we'll cover off shortly. So this is the power supply the 6 head fogger comes with. Now this is just a cheap power supply and I don't think these are that reliable. So what I like to use is generally better quality power supplies for most things, and I usually go for Meanwell. So that's a Meanwell power supply there. They're both at 48 volt, that's 7.3 amp, and that is 4 amp. So this is capable of a lot more juice, but I will be running it off the Meanwell power supply instead of um, these ones here. I'll keep that as a backup. Some people have commented I can be a bit rough on the old Chinese made parts. But China does actually produce some pretty good quality stuff. This is made in China, of course, and you can tell it's of a low quality. But the Meanwell is also made in China, and I've never had an issue with any Meanwell uh, drivers or power supplies. So they obviously do produce some uh, good quality gear. We are back up and running. 
So this here has a new uh, six disc fogger in it. You can see the amount of fog that uh, comes out of there. Um, it's an awful lot. Um, more than what comes out of these. Um, quite a substantial amount more. You can see it all being created there. Now the reason I've gone to a six disc fogger over a 12 disc fogger is cooling. When you're in a hot dry climate like I am, you can actually cool the air temperature a substantial amount by shifting it from its uh, temperature, its dry bulb temperature, to its wet bulb temperature. So all the air coming out of there will be at the wet bulb temperature, which is a lot lower. So if I'm constantly pumping air out of this room and constantly bringing in a new air through this device here, that air temperature coming in will always be lower. So my goal is to be able to run this more frequently as the extractor fan is constantly pulling air out of this room. And because I'm running it more frequently, the air coming in will be colder. So I shouldn't say the air coming in will be colder. For a longer period, the air coming in will be colder. Because when that turns off and air and fresh air still comes in, it might go back to that sort of 30 degree, 35% uh, humidity. But if we can run it through this more often, it's going to shift it down to that 20, 20 degree you know, 100% humidity mark. So we will retire this thing. You've done your job, hydro, hydro fogger, but you're gonna go back into storage. So she's alive and kicking. It's pumping the uh, humidity up through this pipe here and in the wall, which goes, um, feeds straight down the center of my fruiting room and pumps the humidity out each side. We'll check it out. I don't know if you guys can quite see that, but it's just coming out these little holes all the way down my fruiting room. Now that gives a really even humidification through the entire room. So I'm kind of being really cheeky here and I've just uh, sellotaped a uh, thermometer you'd use for testing the temperature of meat or bread um, into one of the holes where my uh, humidification comes out. So that's been in there for a while now and that's, um, that's uh, adjust the probe's now adjusted to the temperature of the air coming in and it says 20 degrees, 20.9 degrees. I don't know if you guys can quite read that. 20.9 degrees. So the air outside is 28 degrees and the air coming outside, coming into my fruiting chamber through my humidification system is about 20 to 21 degrees. I used to keep this in my fruiting room and now I've moved it outside. I've ran it outside for a long time. And the reason I've done that is because this fan here doesn't actually suck in all the spores that are in there and the water in here stays relatively clean. If you put it inside the fruiting room, all the spores, all the biological matter gets sucked through and this water gets filthy really quickly. And that's when I was doing things like using UV lights to try and stop the, the, the build up in there, the bacterial growth. Um, keeping it out here virtually completely stops that. You get a little bit of growth, growth you need to clean off every now and then, but it's, it's 5% to what it was when you have these mounted in the fruiting room. So that's going. One thing we can do is actually check how well it performs versus the other two through my um, home automation software. It actually graphs the humidity on a line. So we'll uh, check out the difference between all three and you'll just see um, how well each one performs, especially these uh, types of units which are actually plumbed in um, compared to let's say a hydro fogger which just sits on your floor and um, pumps humidity out. This is results from the hydro fogger. On a cool day on the left, you can see it does its job at keeping the humidity up, but once the weather warms and the humidity drops, the hydrofogger can't even keep the fruiting room above 75% humidity. That is a small problem. This is the six head fogger. You can see these vertical lines I'm circling. That's every time it turns on. And each time it turns on, it's going to cool the air coming into the room to the wet bulb temperature. This is why I wanted a smaller fogger, so it turns on more often and gets the air colder more frequently. So what is my opinion on hydro foggers? If you've got a small area, I mean, they do the trick and they do the trick pretty well. If you want an even humidification for them, you probably need to look at ducting the humidity throughout the room or having fans blow it everywhere. I keep it as a reliable backup and I've had to use it more than once. Should I just keep another 10 disc uh, fogging block as a backup? Potentially, and I'll probably do that in the future. But I actually bought this quite a while ago, and it was my intent to use this as a primary means of humidification.
but I stayed with these because they just do the job so well. I also have it outside of my uh, fruiting chamber, and because it's outside of the chamber, you get a lot less gunk and build up in there. 